Hey guys, I'm Hector, and if you follow Skilled Camp at all, you should know that I live and breathe Loyola Solo Queue. In today's guide, I'm going to give you my top 5 ways to abuse Loyola mistakes for every role. These tricks are so easy and effective to execute, even McBase can do them, so they're sure to get you smurfing in no time. Let's get into it. My first tip is for mid lane, and this tip should be applicable for a very long time, considering how long Riot has refused to nerf teleport. You should be running it in like 90% of your games on 90% of the champions you play because of how broken it is at the moment. High low players tend to know exactly how to play around it due to its prevalence in the meta for so long, but there is a small cheese that you can do to low elo players who don't really think about their game plans and will generally fall for this very often. The tip is simple. I literally just run into enemy players and bait them into hitting me. It sounds really dumb, but if your opponents don't actually kill you, then any damage you take here isn't going to be relevant at all. The point behind this tactic is to bait them into wasting their remaining resources. They're gonna fall for this every single time. They see misposition and they go on you with absolutely zero regard for anything else. Once they've wasted all of their abilities, mana, and sometimes health on me, then I can just finish shoving the wave, recall, and teleport back to lane. The process can get a bit sloppy, especially if junglers come at an awkward time, but it's very useful when you actually manage to do it, and I highly recommend learning the limits of how much damage you can take so you know exactly what you can get away with. The whole point of teleport is to get a lead over your opponent by forcing them to take a bad recall timing. The point of this bait is basically to guarantee that you get value out of your teleport every single time, and it's mostly applicable in the lower elo brackets such as platinum and below. Before we continue, you should know that skill capped is the place to be if you're serious about improving. We upload tons of guides every week that are exclusive to our subscribers. With over 800 guides, 100 challenger courses, an improvement guarantee when actively using Skillcap, and a direct pro replay coaching service, there's every reason to join our community so that you can actually start climbing in Season 10. My next tip is going to be for support players. I'm going to give you a bit of context for this game just so you guys know what was going on. The level 1 part isn't so much abusing a low elo mistake, but rather it's just a small tip for engaged supports when you're in a bad matchup. I still see a ton of low elo players doing the whole fake leashing gig at level 1, even though 2013 was 7 years ago. Fake leashing does not give you as much value as just walking into lane and getting a minion advantage with your partner. It's especially valuable to do this when your opponents are leashing and you aren't as an engage support. By getting in lane and building a minion lead, you won't get poked down in ranged matchups due to the fact that the enemy duo is going to have to deal with a minion deficit for a while. Normally the Thresh Ezreal into Caitlyn Morgana matchup is an instant dodge in champion select, but you can generally avoid a lot of poke in the early game by doing this level 1 tactic. So my level 1 maneuver made this lane go pretty well during the early game. We're actually going even in a terrible matchup. Then I do this. Now we're losing. Very, very badly. My questionable gameplay has basically guaranteed that my Ezreal is going to have to take a very bad base timing. Unfortunately, it's always support diff in the bot lane. He begins channeling his recall, so I do as well. Now I don't actually plan to recall, but if you want to trick your teammate into completing theirs, channel yours as well until the last second. That's a pro tip for controlling your teammates. Because we're technically recalling, the enemy bot wants to take their own as well to match ours. So I'm going to wait until the last second to show, and I'm going to drag the wave here, forcing a freeze. This works so often because low elo support players are completely oblivious to anything related to wave management. Morgana should 100% be walking the wave into my tower so that I can't set up a freeze like this. But of course, she's incompetent, so Caitlyn is going to suffer for it. With a simple but very powerful move, I went from winning lane at level 1, throwing at level 2, but bringing it back at level 4 by setting my Ezreal up to farm a huge wave even though he had to take a horrible base timing. On to ADC. 
For this tip, we're not just abusing the mistakes of the enemy ADC, but the bot lane duo as a whole. Anytime I have lane priority at level 1, be it from the matchup or the fact that the enemy leashed, then I literally always cheat a recall. Very briefly, if you don't know what that is, it's basically just basing on the third wave and coming back to lane with an extra Doran's Blade. Now why this is so powerful in bot lane is that it works 99% of the time because it requires coordination from both the ADC and support to prevent you from doing so. Basically, the second you crash the third wave into the enemy tower, it's essentially guaranteed to work in low elo. The reason why is that at this point, the enemy ADC and support would have to coordinate a fast push into my tower to prevent it, so that they can also recall. Then, the enemy support would have to understand wave management, which <clears throat> they don't, and make sure that my support doesn't freeze on them like I did in that previous Thresh clip. And that's if I'm not already back in lane, depending on how big my initial crash was. There is a lot of nuance that can go into this cheater recall in bot lane, and the enemy duo requires both the knowledge that it's happening to them, and then the coordination to prevent it, which is why it's basically guaranteed to work in low elo. I chose this particular game as an example for this, just to demonstrate how easy it is to pull off. And that's because I did it in the most scuffed way imaginable. I was autopiloting and crashed the second wave too early, not getting a clean 3 wave crash. But then, I just crashed the third wave anyways and I still pulled it off and the enemy duo was none the wiser since no one does this to them in low elo. After you base, you can just get another Doran's Blade like I said or a call in easy matchups and come back and then you have so many winning options that you're bound to get ahead. You could now just spam shove waves into the enemy tower and force them to eventually take a bad recall, or you can set up a freeze which is harder to break due to your item advantage and once again force them to take a bad recall. Or if your jungler is smart and realizes you have a freeze going, you can set up a gank and then continue the freeze, both killing the enemy bot lane and denying the enemy a ton of farm. This tip is applicable by every ADC champion in low elo since matchups don't really matter because no one knows what to do when you pull this off on them. Next up we have jungle and this tip is going to be applicable anytime both junglers are pathing towards the same side of the map. For example, both of them start bottom and path towards top side. See, junglers tend to be very determined in getting their scuttle crabs. And to be fair, it's not just a low elo thing. Their determination is what allows me to take both scuttles from them very frequently. Their mistakes are painfully obvious. They either get there at a lower level than I am, so they just get out dueled and lose the scuttle fight, or they get there at either too low health to contest it, or not even on time at all, or both, like to Zack. Now that they've revealed their pathing for absolutely no reason, I just go take the other skull crab and I'm really ahead in the game. To me, this is the dumbest way I beat low elo junglers. I literally do nothing and I just win because they don't understand basic jungle matchups. Look, here's an example. When I'm playing Kragas with the wrong runes, I know that I can't duel the enemy set for the scuttle crab. So I just go to the other one. That's it. <laughs> Honestly, if you're really trying to climb out of Platinum and below, I would just recommend picking champions with either good clear speeds so you hit level 4 and just duel them out of Skullcrab, or champions with very good level 3 early skirmishing so that you can again duel them at Skullcrab. Then just scout out where the enemy jungler is starting and just start on the same side as them so you meet them at the Skullcrab. It is insane how often that works for me in low elo. Last but not least, we have top lane. This is one of the silliest ways of abusing low elo players, but it's generally pretty effective. This is something that can be applied fairly often, just like the jungle thing. Basically, it's when the enemy has to leash and you don't have to. If you're playing a strong level 1 champion such as Darius, Set, Jax, Renekton, etc., then you can just cheese them in the bush when they try to get to lane from leashing. Obviously, this isn't some next level secret that only I know of, we've all experienced this cheese, but I feel like players generally have a hard time converting this early game cheese into a guaranteed lead to snowball the game. So let's take a look at an example. This game, I was not expecting to do it at all since I saw Fiddlesticks in bot lane, and you can see my mouse wasn't even on screen. 
Then Irelia randomly face checks me. I will admit my E was bad because I was just so caught off guard. I should have saved it to chase rather than for damage, but whatever. Anyways, what you do afterwards is really simple. You build up a very slow push. Your opponent can't contest a wave because they're low, obviously from the cheese, so it's guaranteed to be in your control. Then you have three options. One, your opponent is low from their dumb face checking and their jungler is pathing bot side, whereas yours is generally going to be pathing top side. You should ping your jungle and set up an easy dive. The entire game should generally be over at this point because of how ahead you should get off of that dive. Two, your jungler hates winning the game for free, so you cheat a recall just like in bot lane. Recalling in general is just very, very powerful, which is why a lot of the strategies in this guide are centered around it. Coming back to lane with an item advantage is game winning if you capitalize on it. Or three, you dive them by yourself because they keep taking random damage and then you snowball out of control. Like I said, this tip may seem a bit cheesy, but it's less about the cheese and more about the steps you take afterwards, which are important to know. Knowing how to use early slow pushes to guarantee a lead off of your opponents is pivotal to top lane gameplay, and once you know the flowchart for using your lead, then any tip that actually gets you there is going to be very handy to know, and this one is really relevant in the lower elo brackets. Oh, and to avoid this happening to you, just go this way, or this way after leashing if your opponent's level 1 is strong. You definitely shouldn't lose the game at level 1 because of greedy pathing. Alright, that's going to wrap up this video. If you want to see certain type of low elo content out of me, be sure to let us know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching.